Hello and welcome to this presentation on top dressing. My name is Pamela Sherritt and I'm the turf grass specialist at Ohio State. Top dressing describes the action of applying a thin layer of material over a turf grass surface. The material used for top dressing turf is usually sand, soil, compost or a combination of all. There are several reasons why top dressing is an important part of any turf grass management program. First, top dressing material is used to maintain a consistent, smooth playing surface so that there are no ruts and holes that could adversely affect player safety or the quality of the game. The material is applied and dragged or brushed across the turf to make sure that any holes or depressions are filled. The second role that top dressing plays in turf management is to reduce the bulk density of native soil fields or to maintain particle size distribution on sand based fields. This particular picture shows a soil profile that has been deep tined and then had sand top dressing added to it to reduce compaction and open up drainage channels through the soil. As we can see from this chart, sand increases the amount of air spaces in the soil and also reduces the tendency for that soil to become compacted. A study at Ohio State looked at ways to enhance turf recovery between games if the field surface had been severely damaged by traffic and adverse weather. To prepare the soil we used a traffic simulator to cause significant damage to a wet soil surface. Some of the recovery treatments included sand or calcined clay top dressing and the installation of sand or calcined clay slits. This picture shows that the two best treatments, highlighted in yellow, that retained the most ground cover during traffic conditions were those that had been both top dressed and slit with sand or calcined clay. Sand slits are channels created in the top 6 to 12 inches of soil that are backfilled with sand or calcined clay. Their purpose is to provide a drainage channel from the field surface to the underlining drain pipe. If slits have been installed, top dressing must be performed regularly to stop the slits from capping over with native soil since once they are capped off they don't work. The combination of sand top dressing and slits creates a scenario whereby water can move rapidly off the field surface and down through the soil profile. If there is not a budget to install sand slits, regular sand top dressing can also significantly improve surface drainage. The third reason top dressing is applied to turf is to dilute thatch. Thatch is a layer of organic material that builds up between the grass plant and the soil. It is made up of plant residues like old crowns, roots, stolons and rhizomes. Grass clippings do not contribute to the thatch layer since they break down too quickly. Some thatch is actually a good thing on an athletic field as it can provide the athlete with a soft cushion if they fall, but once it becomes thicker than half an inch it can hold water and cause problems with shallow rooting. Thatch is naturally broken down or decomposed by earthworms and other organisms in the soil. But if the rate of thatch buildup is quicker than its rate of decomposition, and if it becomes excessive, then it becomes a problem. On fields with sand root zones, zones that are devoid of earthworms, then thatch must be controlled by the turf manager through coring and top dressing. On fields that get a lot of traffic and wear and the ground cover gets worn away, thatch accumulation is not really a problem. But baseball outfields can sometimes be prone to excessive thatch accumulation because they generally don't get a lot of traffic. Certain grasses like Kentucky bluegrass and Bermuda grass are also prolific thatch producers. So if they are present on an outfield, they need to be managed. And as mentioned earlier, fields built on a sand root zone, devoid of earthworms, will also need to have thatch levels managed. Top dressing helps to control thatch by diluting it which means the top dressing soil mixes with the thatch. Organisms in the soil can now decompose the thatch, but most importantly, the thatch is diluted so that it is not a discrete spongy layer at the top of the soil. This picture shows a thatch problem on the left. The picture in the middle shows a core sample with a thatch layer. The picture on the right shows the same turf top dressed. Notice how the thatch is mixed with the soil and how well the crowns, or the bottom parts of the grass plants, are protected. The actual amounts of thatch in these two samples is the same, but the thatch on the right has been diluted. The fourth reason top dressing is applied to turf is in conjunction with renovation. The combination of coring, seeding and top dressing 
provides much greater benefits than any one of those practices performed alone. The top dressing material covers the seed, helping to retain moisture and preventing seed movement. To recap, reasons to top dress are to smooth the playing surface, reduce bulk density, dilute thatch, hold a seed in place and conserve moisture during seeding. There are numerous top dressing materials available. A golden rule of top dressing is to match the material with the underlying soil. This is particularly important on sand root zones. On native soil root zones, top dressing materials can include a good quality sandy topsoil, pure sand, a combination of sand and compost, a combination of sand and calcined clay, or any combinations of these materials. If, any of, if one of the goals of top dressing is to improve drainage, then sand is typically the governing material, since adding it will improve infiltration rates over time. On sand root zones, top dressing materials are generally comp composed of pure, clean sand, or a combination of sand and calcined clay. The calcined clay is sometimes added to help retain moisture. Not all sands are the same. There are specific criteria for sands used on native soil or sand root zones. Particle size distribution, uniformity, shape and chemical makeup are all, all important factors. Local sand suppliers should be able to offer information on their sand products that include details of each of these criteria. Sands are classified by their size of their particles. As shown here, fine gravel contains granular particles greater than 2 mm in diameter, while fine sands have much smaller diameters of 0.1 to 0.25 mm. As a general rule of thumb, medium coarse uniform sands are used on native soils, with slightly smaller particles introduced on sand root zones. Finer particles of sand are used on sand root zones to ensure surface stability. Basically, the coarser the sand, the less stable or firm it is. A common top dressing sand used on native soils would adhere to the United States Gulf Association or USGA sand highlighted in yellow. With 60% of the sand particles in the medium coarse size range, this sand is considered a uniform medium coarse sand. Finding a good local sand supplier is the key to a good top dressing program. It's also important to get to know what the materials look like. Looking at these four materials, which do you think is a uniform medium coarse sand? This one is predominantly silt and clay. This one contains too much gravel. This one actually is gravel. The sand on the bottom right is a uniform, medium coarse sand. Once you know what a, medium, a uniform, medium coarse sand looks like and feels like, it makes quality control of top dressing products much easier. Composts are becoming increasingly popular as top dressing materials, on their own or added to sand or soil. On native soil fields, they can help to improve the soil structure and add some nutrient value. As with sands, not all composts are alike. When adding compost to turf, it must contain a bulking agent, like wood chips. The bulking agent helps to improve soil drainage and porosity. There are numerous criteria for a good quality compost. The amount of organic matter and the carbon-nitrogen ratio are important and composts are also regulated for things like particle size, because they are screened, pH, salt content and nutrient value. Locating a good local source of compost then is just as important as selecting a sand supplier. Many sand suppliers will also supply compost and soils. In this particular scenario, peat moss was applied to the centre of a field in the hope that it would soak up water, smooth out the surface and provide a place for grass seed to grow. In reality, it created a muddy mess. The moral of this story is that if a top dressing program is started, it must be done with due diligence and careful planning. A uniform, medium coarse sand should be applied to native soil fields, and a sand that matches the underlying root zone should be applied to sand fields. The introduction of soil, compost or calcine clay should not be done without very careful consideration. Some field managers have applied recycled crumb rubber to high traffic areas to protect the crown of the grass plant and to try to prevent loss of ground cover. There is some research to suggest that the crumb rubber does improve wear tolerance in high traffic areas, but again, introducing any type of foreign material onto a field, 
must be done with consideration as to what effect that material may have on soil and turf performance. The recommended rate for crumb rubber is no greater than a quarter of an inch depth. There are several ways to apply top dressing materials. On grass in fields and other small areas it can be applied by hand. The material should be dry so that it can be applied swiftly and uniformly. Some baseball field managers prefer to keep machinery off their grass in fields to keep soil compaction to a minimum, so we'll use this method. If the material is being used to create a seed bed, a hand weasel helps to create a good, seed, a good tilth needed for that seed soil content. For larger areas, dry materials, namely sand, can be applied with a rotary spreader. There are many top dressing machines available, some belt driven, some with a rotating disc. Larger machines obviously hold more material in the hopper and so need to be refilled less frequently. Here is an example of a school dist district that has been applying an 80-20 sand compost top dressing mix for many years. The added benefit of including compost is that they have reduced their fertilizer input by about 30%. To get the most benefit from a top dressing application, it is usually done in conjunction with some kind of soil cultivation, like coring or tining. Poking a hole in the soil that is filled with a granular material like sand improves surface drainage capabilities. Some field managers like to apply top dressing first and then run the cultivator over the top to disperse the top dressing material down into the holes. A recent innovation in cultivation and top dressing is the recycled dresser. This machine pulls cores, pulverizes the soil and then reapplies it as a top dressing in one pass. Lastly, we'll look at rates and frequency of top dressing turf. The amount of top dressing applied will depend upon the amount of damage to the field surface, with more damage and bigger holes requiring more top dressing. The cutting height of the grass, the physical texture of the underlying soil, since adding material will change that, and the budget are all important factors. A typical application rate is 1 8 to 3 8 of an inch depending on those factors. Over an entire season anywhere from 25 to 100 tonnes could be applied to the turf. How often the field is top dressed depends upon the playing season and the factors listed previously. Some field managers have the manpower and budget to lightly top dress every few weeks. Some make three to four applications per year and some do one or two heavier applications outside of the playing season. If soil cultivation and top dressing is carried out in the summer, it's a good idea to have at least 10 days of recovery time before anyone uses the field. This concludes the presentation on top dressing.